Okay, so in this video we are going to look at using input. We've got some buttons on the front of our micro bit. We are going to look at how to get a different image to display when we press each of those buttons. Okay, so I'm carrying on from where I left off last time. I'm not using my animation, I'm just going to use the arrow. Okay, now in order for this to work, we need to be constantly checking to see if those buttons have been pressed. Okay, we can't just do it once, we've got to do it over and over and over again until the end of time. And in order to do that, we are going to need a while loop, an infinite while loop. Okay, we say while true and then a colon. And then you'll notice that uh, we're indented a little bit. Okay, anything that we write inside this loop is going, it's going to keep on doing this over and over and over again. Okay, so the way that we check to see if button A has been pressed is like this. We say uh, if um, button A, like that, button underscore A dot is pressed, open brackets, close brackets, which you might think, oh god, that's that's a mouthful, isn't it? And it's like, yeah, okay, so it's a little, it's a little bit long-winded, but that's how we check. Okay, so if button underscore A dot is underscore pressed, open brackets, close brackets, we are going to display dot show uh, left arrow. Like that. Okay, now that really is all there is to it. Okay. The whole time the micro bit is on, it's going to be constantly checking. It's going to say, is button A pressed? Is button A pressed? Is button A pressed? If button A is pressed, it's going to show the left arrow. Okay? You'll notice this indentation. Okay? We're only going to do this stuff if this is true. So if button A is pressed, we do the stuff that's indented underneath there. Okay? I'm going to download that code. I'm going to flash it onto my micro bit and let's have a look and see how this works. Okay, so here I go. I've got my micro bit here. Okay, and there's my button A. You'll notice there's nothing on there. As soon as I press the A button, it shows my arrow. Okay, but the arrow doesn't go away and uh, you know, if you want to reset it, there's a button on the back you can press. If you press that, you'll notice it's gone away. So you can press the reset button and press the A button and keep testing that. Okay. Now, a little bit of a task for you. Um, using some similar code, okay, can you create a right arrow and make it so that uh, when you press the B button, it shows the right arrow. So pause the video, create some code that um, builds a right arrow, and then have a line of code inside your loop which says if button B is pressed, show the right arrow. Okay, so pause that, and then when you come back, I'll show you the way that I did it. Okay, so have you done that? If you haven't, pause it, do it. Okay, those of you that have done it, let's just quickly create our right arrow. So right arrow equals image with a capital I. Um, and it's going to be the opposite of this. So it's going to be uh, 25900. Uh, and uh, 02590 and um, still going to be 99999 um, and then it's going to be uh, 0250 again 0259 Zero, and then finally it's going to be uh, two five nine zero zero. That should be our right arrow. Okay, cool. So we have. I don't need the colon on the end there. 
So we've created our right arrow and our left arrow. Okay, so down here, you probably did something like this. If button uh, b dot is pressed display dot show right arrow. Okay, something like that. Yeah, if yours was similar to that, well done. If yours was totally different, but it still worked, well done as well. Okay, so I'm going to download that uh, file. I am going to flash it onto my micro bit. Here we go. So I now have my micro bit here. I've got my A and my B buttons. When I press the A button, I've got that arrow. When I press the B button, I've got the other arrow. Okay, so I can swap between these arrows by pressing the buttons. Okay, so maybe I want it to, if I'm not pressing any button, I want it to, like, you know, clear the screen and not display anything. Can I do that? Of course I can do that. Okay, now there's a couple of little minor changes that we need to make down here first. Okay, so down here we have our code. While true, if button A is pressed, display.show left arrow. If button B is pressed, now at the moment these two questions, these two decisions, they are not linked. Okay, so what we want to do is link them together. So the way the system is going to work, it's going to check if button A is pressed. If it is, we're going to display the left arrow. If button A is not pressed, we're then going to check to see if button B is pressed. And the way we do that is like that. Instead of saying if, we say elif. Now elif is short for else if. So if button A is pressed, do this. Else, so if that's not the case, check to see if button B is pressed and then do this and then one final thing on the end we are just going to have else so what the else means is if button A is not pressed and button B is not pressed what we want to do we want to clear the display so we're going to say display dot clear okay don't forget to open brackets and close the brackets now if I download this, fingers crossed, this is going to work exactly as intended. Copy in that file. Okay, and so now let's grab my micro bit. Here we go. I'm going to press the A button, it displays the arrow. When I let go of it, it clears the display. I'm going to press the B button. It displays my other arrow. When I let go of it, it clears the display. Okay, so well done. You've got your first interactive micro bit program. What you can do now, see if you can uh, play around with that. Uh, see if you can get it to do something different if the A button and the B button are pressed at the same time. Have a think about that. Not an easy task, but that's what I want you to try. Okay? Next time we will look at using the accelerometer.